Los Angeles is the place these gangster girls call home. It's the city with the largest gang population in the country. A drive through LA County will take you through 1,300 different gang neighborhoods, according to the LA Sheriff's Department. Typical of these is an area just six minutes from downtown. Local gang members refer to the neighborhood as Vicky's Town. The name will never appear on any official map of the area, but unofficially, Vicky's Town is this residential section of Boyle Heights, a largely poor and Hispanic area. These 10 residential blocks provide the hangouts and provoke the shootouts for the 30 or so teenagers who make up the Vicky's Town gang. He's trying to take away her toy and he gave her a face he's and went, Boom! <laughs> Two of the gang's most active girls are sisters. Shy Girl is 19. Her real name is Muau. She's been active in the gang since she was 13. Her older sister, Wendy, is the one who brought her into the gang. Wendy's original gang name is Crazy, and this is her turf. This says Eastside Vicky's home, and my homeboy, Shady Drifter, Red, and, and who wrote that? It looked nasty. And some girls that don't know how to write. When you write on the walls, it's like showing your turf. This is my neighborhood. If you don't write up anything in your neighborhood, ain't nobody gonna know it's your neighborhood. Then they're gonna go write up their neighborhood in your neighborhood, then it's gonna make it seem like if it's their neighborhood. Wendy's matter-of-fact descriptions provide a chilling insight into the mindset of a gang girl. There's an incident where in the corner right there, we were hanging out there, and um, I was pregnant, and they are shooting at us right here in this lot, and everybody turned around and jumped on me because I was pregnant, and everybody that jumped over my stomach got hit. I'm gonna take you to another place where they shot and killed my cousin. Rest in peace. I just jumped in this corner right here. My cousin got shot and he died right here. That's where Moal got shot. And I was trying to tell her not to get off my car and she <laughs> refused and ended up throwing herself out of the car just to um, spray can and cross out somebody, some other neighborhood. They started shooting. I was yelling at her to get in the car. They were at a close range. And um, it was this corner here. It was she's spraying on this corner right here. And she's riding up Vicky's town, spraying them out. And as a matter of fact, there goes the rival neighborhoods right there. And they came from across the street, this right here, and they started shooting at us. And those there are rival gang members. Next to Vicky's town is a hilly area, free of gang affiliation where Wendy has always gone to get away. I used to walk all this, all these hills, just to waste time so I don't go home. I used to come up here and get high. Or I used to come up here and um, test out my guns. There was a time where I was really high and um, I just didn't care about the world. I hated the world. and. I thought the world was, that was why I was the way I was, and I used to shoot at the freeway, shoot at everybody down there. Yeah, scandalous, huh? That bridge, there's a park down below it. Well, that bridge, we were coming out of the projects, and there was probably a lot, a lot of people out of that projects came out. If it wasn't for my big mouth, we wouldn't have got jumped. Because they said, where are we from? I said, Vicky's Town. And they said, Vicky's Town, yeah. They go, they said their neighborhood. Then after they said their neighborhood, they say, well, you know what? They dissed Vicky's Town. After they dissed Vicky's Town, I looked at them. I looked at my, my, um, my homegirls, my sister. And they were looking at me like, man, you know, we're in their neighborhood. And what am I going to do? And I just looked at them and said, you know what? Fuck your neighborhood. And boom, they all rushed us. 
The rush is like, 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 sh flies on sh <laughs> And then they're talking about they're gonna kill us. I'm still here. Out of tw third, more than 30 people, you would imagine. I would, just one person, you know what I mean? Just one person could kill you. They didn't kill you, They're, you're in their neighborhood. Especially when I dissed their neighborhood, and as many as them, there's a lot of them. There's only five of us. What a trip, huh? Wendy feels that her attraction to fighting comes from conflicts at home. A lot of negative things at home. My parents were down on me. I was always called stupid. And that kept me going, because when every time I would hear that, I let, got put down, I would build up this anger in me and got so mad and just go back out in the streets and I release it. This is the street right here where I brought my little sister. Took her on a drive-by, came pulled up, right here on the corner right here, got off the car, started shooting. After I started shooting, I was shooting, shooting. They came, they're in the middle of the street. We we're all just shooting at each other. And then took off, my little sister was sitting there screaming and crying. And I just, come on, eat your candy, eat your candy. I didn't want her to cry, she was scared though. I wasn't thinking of my little sister at the time. I was mad, the fact my parents left her with me. And I was only a teenager. I didn't know how it was to really have a kid. Wendy became a mother at age 18. Her son was soon taken from her by the Department of Social Services because she was being beaten by her boyfriend and was abusing drugs. I would use every day. I used to go and sell, I used to go and um, jack people, or I used to beat up people or gunpoint people for money just for drugs. Just for drugs, man. It was real sick where I started getting real skinny looking like a base head. Real ugly. Wendy has left the gang. Now 21, she works part-time at a fast food restaurant and struggles to stay off drugs. Her younger sister is still active in the gang and Wendy worries about her safety. I think that one day she... Maybe she'll get shot. I'm real close to her. And I get scared when she's out there. When she was 13, Muau, also known as Shy Girl, joined the Vicky's Town Gang. In her six years as a gang member, she has been shot, stabbed, and beaten by rivals, yet continues to fight back. I know I'm stubborn. Like a lot of times, these things like this happen when I'm walking through my rival neighborhood. They jump me, or last time they busted my head open for walking through the neighborhood. They tell me, you know, get out of their neighborhood, and I just laugh at them. Muau's bravado makes her the continual target of rival gangs. She takes pride in the number of attacks she has withstood. But recently, one attack turned deadly. Three weeks ago, I got dropped off in my neighborhood at the park. A couple of my homeboys came up. They were kicking with me. While we were walking towards the front of the park, they started blasting at us. A couple of my homies around and I just started yelling at my neighbor. And I was throwing up my signs and yelling out Vicky's time and you know, you dissing, you know, dissing them. From there, that's how I got shot in my arm, which is right here. The bullet went through here and it came out through here. Right here. And my turn around and I looked and one of my homeboys, he was laying there on the floor. What happened? I go, you're right and I seen a bullet hole right in his chest. I was sitting there, I was trying to help him and sitting there and I was like, man, I couldn't believe that. I never seen, I never had a person die 
right there in my arms. And I was just trying my hardest to help him. And there was nobody around. So I, I laid him down and I told him, just be strong, you know. I went to go call it, you know, ambulance and stuff and came back and tried to help him and stuff, but it was too late. I couldn't do nothing about it. They made me go to the hospital. I didn't want to go. I don't like going to the hospital. It takes forever. And I, it takes up my time. You know, I could be doing something else besides sitting in the hospital, waiting for them to heal me. Because at the times when I did get shot, most of the time I was just buzzing. And like, it just felt like a little pinch. I got stabbed one time too. And I didn't feel that either. Well, I felt it, but then it was like whatever. It didn't matter. It didn't really hurt me. It was like whatever. It was like a little sting, and that's it. But then at that time, I had to go to the hospital because um, I had to get stitches. It was like right here behind my ear, like that, and they stabbed me like that. They tried to stab me like that, stab me like that, but they didn't get the chance to. And this is when I was getting in a fight in my rival neighborhood. And then the last time, like they bust my head open and I had to go to the hospital for that. But I never went back to go take out the stitches. I took them out myself. Muao and her sister Wendy grew up in a family of five girls. Their father, a former Marine and a longshoreman, describes himself as a strong disciplinarian and believed his girls should be able to protect themselves. Well, I'll be talking to my girls, tell them how to hit. He said, the most delicate wrist can knock a big dude down. And keep that wrist straight. Instead of, like, you see girl fight, they just slap like this, or grab the hair, where they could be able to get down and just and hit like a man. My father, he did hit me, all, you know, he hit all of us. And he used to beat us all the time. It didn't matter. He's like, for us, we always stuck together. Muao and Wendy followed their older sister into the gang. Like most girls who join gangs, they choose to dress like the male gangsters. Dressing like a girlish type or anything like that, it's, it was never me. I would dress like a guy, in other words. I'd just slick my hair back and just, you know, put my hair in a braid or just kick it. To me, I look just like a guy. And when I go through my rival neighborhood, I just walked, it, to me, the only thing that goes through my mind is you gotta be down for yours, no matter if they pull out a gun on you or what, or they try to stab you or jump you. Moao shows no fear when walking into situations where she might encounter a rifle, though she never carries a gun. Being down for your neighborhood is like, you, you don't give a fuck, you, like you're down for your neighborhood as in, what can I say? Like, if somebody wants to fight you or jump you, you know, you gotta be down with you. You gotta, you know, go against them. So in other words, you gotta be brave. Being down is being brave. As for me, I, there's no way of avoiding me getting jumped by guys or getting shot out by guys, stabbed by guys, because they just don't really care. They, most of the guys that see me, they think that I'm a guy. So, and when they find, they do find out that I'm a girl, they just, it doesn't really go through their mind. It's like, it just, they don't care. So in other words, you can't really avoid any of the guys jumping you or shooting at you or anything like that. At times I would go to the, my rival neighborhood and I would just yell out my neighborhood, Vicky's Town, it's all about Vicky's Town, what's up? Come on now, you know, come out to play. <laughs> I do it for for fun and just to have some action. It's when I get bored, I just like I just go out there and I may be causing trouble, but hell, I already got we don't even get along with them, so what's the use, of, you know? So hell, I just go and if something happens, it just happens. While she's on the street, Muao keeps up the image of a young warrior, 
But since the death of her friend just three weeks before we met her, she's been writing poems that reveal a different side of her. As I sit here, all I can see is pretty much a blur, wondering what may happen in my future. As I think to myself, if I keep walking down this dark path, always remembering all the bad things that happened in my past, as a few good memories pass through my mind, I come to believe this dark path I walk, I'm soon going to find. Myself laying in a dark black hole, thinking to myself, why didn't I listen to what I was told? As the pain inside me is not letting me be free, I don't know where to turn to or who to turn to. So as I sit in my room feeling down and blue, I always wish I could die. So I don't have to feel the tears that come down my eyes. And so I don't feel the pain in my heart that is just tearing me apart. And that's one of the poems that I wrote. And when I'm, I don't know, whenever I sit in there and I have nothing to do, I just sit there and I'll write. Wendy's car was impounded because she was driving it without legal registration. It's now difficult for her to get to work. And it's a two-hour bus ride to visit her son. Right now, I just try to finish my like drug classes. I see them on the weekends, sometimes during the weekends, weekdays. Muao was picked up with a group of gang members in violation of the terms of her probation. She was sent to Juvenile Hall for three days, then released to a stricter probation. Because you know you can't miss not one day of school. I know. And you so can't you be out in the street. Only if it was an emergency. And you can't be out in the street. I can't see you out in the street on the weekends or at night. Though Muao will be under house arrest for another month, she shows no intention of leaving her gang. In my future, I just think if I keep on, you know, gang banging, I'm gonna either end up dead or paralyzed or who knows. To me, gang banging, either you die or you get paralyzed, something bad happens. And no matter what, if you're in, in a gang, you always something bad happens to you.